Hi, and welcome to Leslie Ray's Crafty Gig. My name is Leslie Ray, and this is my helper, Sam. It's my daughter. And the reason wow. I, I am bringing her on board is because she is an expert. And I made in making, these two. And making felt balls. And I made a big one. Can I show them this first? Okay. Uh, this is the necklace that Sam entered into the 4-H competition. Sam is a clover kid, and she made all of these felt balls as well as strung her necklace herself. And she's going to show you how to make the felt balls. Now you can show them the rest of the felt balls you made. Um, I made this little one. And I made both of these. I'll put this behind there so they can see them. Yeah. Uh, the middle. And okay. This is the ball I made. And let it be known, this is the only ball I've ever made with any success. The rest of them are all made by Sam. You want me to turn them down so they can see them easier? No? Okay. These ones are made that you want to see that are very good. Okay. I'm going to hide this one. Show them. It's the color of my nail. Ta da! Okay. This I like thing. this one. I will. Yeah, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Ready? So they can see it easier in your hand. Kind of a tangerine color. It's a blue. Mm -hmm. You want to show them all the blue ones together? Show them. Ready? <gasps> Look at that one. That one's got different colors in it. Can you give it to them a little higher? There you go. It's got a little red and a little purple. There we go. Then they got it. Okay. Yeah. There's another one that you'll like. Will they just like it or will they love it? They'll love it. Okay. Can I fix it? Yeah, we can fix that one. We can show them how to fix it because that one's dry. We can show them how to fix it. That one needs a little fixing, she said. It's a little lumpy, so we'll we'll do that. Okay. <coughs> Goodness. Okay. I'm going to do it with all of them. Okay. Let's... Let's tell them. Well, hang on. Ah! Give me those. Yeah, they don't need to see them all together right now. We can show them all together at the end. Okay? Yeah. We're going to move them out of the way. Out of the way. Because okay. I'm going to be the master. You're, you're the felt ball master? Mm -hmm. All right. You're going to tell them. Because I can make whatever, how many numbers I want. Okay, you want to tell them what they need to make felt balls? This. What we call that? Wool roving. Ew. Wool roving. Wool roving. Okay. <coughs> what else do we need to make it? <coughs> water. What kind of water? Hot, very hot water. And dish soap. And what are we putting all this into? And a container? Can it be an open container like a cup? Can it be an open container like a cup? Has to be a lid. A lidded container. Okay. I got the lid. Uh-huh. Lid cut container. A lidded container, okay. 
All right. So what do we do? Sorry, everyone. I think it's here. She has a bit of a cough. I'm sorry. We tried to get rid of that cough before she came live oh. on the air. But. Yeah. Okay. So let's pull this down. So did y'all, everybody get that? Hi, Mommy. Grammy's here. It looks like Raven came in and Molly came in. Um, to do this, you need some dish soap. Dish soap. This and very hot water. A lidded container. And this. What is that called again? War. Wool roving. Wool roving. Some wool roving. Wool. Wool. Wool roving. Wool. Like wool. Okay. <coughs> Hi, Snoozin. Glad you came in. Do you want to make a mixed one? You alright? You want to make a mixed one? You want to make one of two shades of orange? You need a minute? Okay. Can I talk to him about roving real quick? Yes. Okay. Roving is what they use to make yarn and felt. And it's very fibrous. Okay. <coughs> this hasn't... And it looks like hair too. Looks like hair. Could be hair. Um, And this hasn't been made into anything yet and it pulls real easy see it pulls real easy so yes very unspun it looks like cotton candy you can buy these in pieces you can this I bought as a pack of 10 um, this I got I got this with the winnings that I did from fave crafts at the um, at the uh, I can't remember, but I got a gift card. But there's several places. I'm going to put some links up on my blog after the show because there's lots. Yes, Joanne's and Michael's has them also. Thank you, Mommy. Um, and you can buy them in kits. But for this, it needs to be 100% wool. And it needs to be roving. We've tried this with, like, wool yarn and torn it apart ourselves. Did not work. Have you seen it at, at Hobby Lobby as well, Cheryl? Good. I mean, there's lots of places probably you can get it. But anyway. <laughs> um, how this works. You pull it apart. You pull it apart. You pull your fibers apart. And you stack them. And we're going to stack them in the jar. And the reason it works is because think about if you took a wool sweater threw it in hot water with some soap, what happens to it? It blows up. No, it doesn't blow up. It shrinks. It shrinks, shrinks, shrinks. And so, yes, and it mats exactly. And that's what felt is. It's just a matted wad of fiber. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so, that's what makes... <laughs> you don't pull it apart and then throw it around. Okay, stop. Um, that's what makes it form into a ball. So you're going to get a big wad of fiber pulled, and she's going to show you how to do that in a minute. And I'm the master. You are the master. She is, she is the master ball maker. And so you get out of this. Out of that. And we're not going to use all of that, are we? No. One one piece like this makes about twelve balls. So we'll need twelve twelve balls. We're not making twelve balls tonight. Are we? Yes. No. We have other things to show them besides making balls. Okay? Everything. But there were three adults and Sam sitting around a table at New Year's. And none of our it balls would work, but this thing could make balls like no other. So, all right. And we're going to turn the camera and back down. Thank you. We're going to turn the hair down. Yeah. 
right there. There's the necklace. <coughs> you want an orange necklace, Grammy? Okay, show them how you do this and stack it in there. Okay, you gonna do some of that, some of that. So here, get closer. There we go. You want to explain to him what you're doing? I'm pulling. How big a pieces are you pulling? You, you don't need to stand. You can, or you don't need to sit. Just come on. <sighs> Little pieces. Orange is the Pantone color of the year, really? Who'd have thunk it? Tangerine. Yum. I mean, it's a pretty color. Somebody has to like orange. <gasps> Whoever said tangerine is the new pink was out of their mind. No, no. Can I help you? No. Can I help you pull roving? Can I help you pull roving? I'll put it here and you can line it up in there how you want it. <coughs> it's like pulling cotton candy. Yeah. Yes, if you do itty bitty pieces, you'll get itty bitty balls. Ah. We're gonna try to make a ball about oh yay big maybe. <coughs> the big as my hand must be. No, not as big as your hand, but bigger than itty bitty. You wanna put some of this color in there now? And then, and then you can put some more of this color in. And what makes this work is the, the small strips of the fibers, just a touch of soap to change the pH of the wool and the heat of the water. Had to be really hot. And agitation. And since she's my number one agitation, <coughs> that makes it really effective for her to do this. It's a lot of hair. You want to put more in there? Let's do more. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Yes, one ball per jar unless you get the mystery ball um, that <coughs> that takes off on its own. That's why the yellow balls, we have two. <coughs> Are you getting the hot water? We had two because one didn't connect in with the fibers. You really don't want more than that in there? This is going to be a relatively small ball. So we got some fiber in there. I really don't see the dark orange in there. Did you put any dark orange in there? You didn't, did you? Yes, I did. Can I put some more? But you don't want it wadded in there. You want it to get, to get warm enough? Oh, yeah. Okay, so one drop of soap. <coughs> Can I help you with the soap? Yep. We're putting in one drop of soap. That may be a little <laughs> too much soap. We'll see in a minute. How much stuff, how much fluff you mean, Mommy? Did you saw that? 
Is that enough water? Or do you need more water? Um, it depends on how big you want your ball, how much fluff you use. She um, didn't want a, a ball as big as I wanted. Um, usually one drop will be more than sufficient for several balls. And she put in, um, let's see if you can see, just some water, okay? No oil. No oil. Not oil. And... There you go. Get going. Down here on the camera so they can see what you're doing. And you shake a shake a shake a. Uh, the soap is to. Here, look at it. Look at Take it. it. See how it's already clumping right there? <coughs> okay, keep going. Yes, it, it's very inaccurate. You don't have to. A drop is more than enough soap. No, you don't need lanolin. Yes. Some is less than a lot. Exactly. Uh, the size ball that she's going to end up with is not very big. Basically, she is being the washer. Um, one thing... Yes. <laughs> yes. There's already soap in there. <laughs> uh, she is being the washer. Um... If you've Mama. ever read about making soap balls, or not soap balls, if you ever read about making um, felt balls. balls, the bigger ones, usually you start with a big, big wad one. of um, wool in the middle. You add your roving to the outside, and you form kind of a ball, and you stick it. You stick it in... Um. Yep. Keep keep shaking. You stick it in the wall in some pantyhose, tie knots in them to make bigger felt balls. Okay. And so, are you gonna keep shaking? You're not shaking. Look what you're doing. Look. Shake a shake a shake a shake. And shake a shake a shake a shake a shake. And so you keep doing that. You keep shaking. Because that's agitating it. It never stop. Let me see it. Does it need more water? Okay. Let's see. Right now, can I take it out and show them what it looks like right now? It looks nasty. No, it doesn't. It's just very soapy. Right now, it's a little soapy wad. Okay. But it's formed a ball shape. Okay. Here, can I put a little more hot water in there for you? We put our hot water, just for safety for her, in a little um, icing candy making bottle. Because we can stick it in a pan of hot water, and she can heat it up, and it, it works really well. Keep agitating. Mm -hmm. But if you have lots of kids, <laughs> give each one a jar. Yeah. So... Our brother and my um, daddy um, went to. <coughs> I had a pop drop in my mouth. We went to where? Camp. 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 Bubba and daddy went to camp. Yes. Okay. Shake, 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 says Grammy. This is also why this is fun, right? Ooh, lovely, lovely. Uh, we just dropped a little drop of soap directly into the wool and then added... Mama, look. I know. And then added hot water. Oh, that's what I was saying. I'm sorry. I put the hot water in here for her and put it in... Yes, just one drop. And I put it in the pan. You want to get it out? Did you get paper towels? You didn't think to get paper towels, did you? Or or a, a rag. We we'll use use this for a minute. We're gonna use a Kleenex, but a paper towel or a rag would work good. Oh, I know. Let's use this. This is my this is my art paper towel that I've been saving to use something with. Okay, here, let it. 
kind of dry. Or we're gonna take we took it out. Show them what it looks like. Okay, it's it's a smaller wad. We're gonna dampen some of the the soap off of it to kind of help <coughs> get some of the water out of it. <coughs> oh, it picks up that ink. Let's let's not do that again. Okay. And so right now, when you get some of the soap off of it, it looks like this. And so now she's going to shape it so that it looks ball-like. Okay, so here you go. Shape a, shape a, shape a. And the pressure of of rolling it like you would a a, um, a circle, you know, like you roll Play-Doh or whatever, shapes it into a ball. Into a neat one. Now, with all this soap in here, you could do another one. Now I'm okay. going to put the rest of the roving that we had already pulled in there and add some more hot water. Like a meatball. Exactly. <coughs> Dawn is exactly <coughs> right. Like a meatball. Okay. Did you get that one all finished already? You want to show them? <coughs> They'd like to see it finished. <coughs> Where's the lid? What'd you do with the lid when you took it out? <coughs> Where's the lid, baby? Did y'all see? No, I'm gonna turn it. See my lip wet. Now, let me show you a trick here. Hang on. Okay, you see where it has this line? Okay, going through there. What you can do is take a piece of of roving, <coughs> kind of stick it over that, and it's still got the hot water in there. You might need just a little more hot water. Hang on. That's why it's nice to have hot water nearby. Yeah? Am I doing it right? I'm not doing it as good as you are. Uh, my hands. Let me get a little more hot water on there because my roving stuff sticking like it does for you. Okay, here. You do it. There you go. So, when you need to... There you go. They want to see you. They want to see you doing the shaping. When you need to kind of repair one, you can um, you can do that. Add just a little bit of roving here or there um, to do that. Or if you want to make it, you need a little more hot water on that one. I'll if, do it. I'll okay. Do it. All right. If you want to make it um, be a mottled colored one, you can um, you can do that. Add roving in certain spots. Anybody have any questions? <coughs> Guests, feel free to log in. Sam and I can do this at the same time with the same hot water. The same, I mean, I let her put the soap in and everything. And mine doesn't become a ball. Mine just becomes a blob. No, but mine does. But hers always becomes a neat little ball. I don't know. See, look. <laughs> look. Mine, not a ball. <laughs> so. Yes, you don't. This, this is just making the felt balls, and you don't need a tool for this at all. <coughs> um, what's really cool with these is that you can then take them, and I've seen people do beading and embroidery on them, and um, I love that. love that. Uh, what you'll want to do is let this sit aside and dry, and when it's all nice and dry, then what you need to do is take like a pearl reamer or something if you want to string it 
uh, you need something that will, um, yeah, I broke mine. I'm sorry. She's looking at me like, mom, yours is not working. Um, you take like a, a, a pearl reamer or something like that to get a good, you know, like ice pick right. maybe and to make a good hole in it because mama, these become mama. dense little matted balls. I'm going to make it work. You'll make it work? Okay. She's going to make it work for me. So. <laughs> I'm going to talk about using the needles though in just a minute, Bev. Mama, I turned in the ball. It did it? Okay, pull it out. Yes, Molly, you want to watch how she does it because she always fixes my... Oh, you're right. Awesome. Okay. It's... So, see, she's going to pat some of the, the stuff off. Soap. Yes. And roll it. And roll it. And... Oops. And drop it on the floor because that's what we like to do. She gets that from her father, Susan. And you roll it. Does it need a little more hot water? Needs a little more hot water. <coughs> Does it need a little repair job or anything? No. You sure? Because mommy really didn't do a good job. Oh, it did a good job. Okay. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> You sure you don't want a little extra roving to fix that? It's looking a little dorky. You want to fix it? Let me see. See, like right there, where it's got a mouth. This one has a mouth. So we're gonna we're gonna cover the mouth. Add a little more hot water. A little more. Come on. Hey, Mom! There you go. See, I became an expert in fixing them because I was so bad at making them. Here you go. Here you go. Fix it. There you go. It's good. It's good. Roll, 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 roll. There you go. Drop it on the floor. Yeah. And get it. Okay, that needs a little more hot water, doesn't it? To get its little hairs in there. Because the hot water makes it shrink. Shrink. Did our fab go away? <coughs> if you've gone away, then good night, fab. Night! You don't have to yell. What if somebody was wearing earphones? Oh, that would be funny. No, it wouldn't be funny. It would hurt their ears. All night. Okay. How are you doing there? See how it turned into a new ball? Ah, and we throw it on the floor again. Okay. It's still better. And see, you still have all this soap in here. You <coughs> technically could, like, cut it in half and so that you could get some more hot water in there. Um, but, yeah. So, here you go. Another <coughs> felted ball. <coughs> She's the ball master. All hail the ball master. Yay. And do, do, Put those down. Do We're not doing that. Okay. Let's clean up your mess. Stop. Stop. Yes, exactly, Vicky. Here you go. Take that away. Take your hot water back to the kitchen. Did it heat up? It did. And take your 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 jar back to the kitchen. Okay. Oh. We're having a set change, so everybody's saying you did a cool job, Sam.
She says yay. So. All right. I'm, I'm going to give you a little lesson in history. Are you ready? Um, how old do you think felting, the art form of felting is? Anybody have any ideas? No, not the Alamo. 3,000 years old? Um, felting as far as making blankets and, um, and that kind of stuff, making covers for housing and all that stuff, yeah, that's really old. Yes, exactly. But what about art felting? Yes. Beginning of time. Art felting has not been around since the beginning of time. Not even thousands of years. Would you believe that the art of felting has been around since 1980? That means Forever. Leslie Ray is older than felting for the art form of felting. Um, I know, right? It's like, wow. Um, there is a lady who is noted for starting to do it as an art form. Her name is Eleanor Stanwood. S-T-A-N-W-O-O-D. Uh, you can go to artfelts.com and find out the history about it. But in 1980... Um, she was on Martha's Vineyard, and she started doing um, felting with basically what they call a needle, and um, like this, and this too, and that too. And what she did, because they used to use the needles in big machines, she took one needle and decided to use it to don't uh uh you can't do that uh, to do decorative things over the top <coughs> of her. Of her items and so she had like a colored batting of wool and then she would take a small needle and punch it like the machine would punch it with little strips and make it decorative and so she is considered the the inventor the mother of doing the actual felting as an art form and from that people have taken it all over yeah, how do you use them like that? yes um, the f but probably what you're thinking of is people who've made blankets and ponchos and clothing and that kind of stuff, but not taking it to the level of let's, you know, do this. So anyway, um, there's several, several sites that, that give her the credit for doing this. I'll post those with my replay when I post my replay so you can go look and see uh, more about felting. Lisa showed me about felting, um, First, Lisa Fulmer. Some of you know Lisa. Um, she showed me about felting on her show. And she was using a piece of wool felt as a base. Sometimes even, I think she did some with maybe even Luchador. And then she added fibers, like roving, to it and created beautiful pictures. And before I had a whole lot of roving, I started... <laughs> just using it because in theory in theory you could take felt and felt it to felt right yes there is sewing machines that do needle felting and you can buy needles to go in sewing machines to do felting so why not die cut felt and felt it together And so that is what I had been playing with or taking um, yarns and even poly yarns. Poly yarns don't do it as well, but, um, but if you have, but if you have wool yarns, that does it perfect. And so stop, stop coughing. Okay. Um, so if you take those and add them, you know, do your needle felting through it, you'll have a back that looks like this because you're basically taking a barbed needle, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. I need my arm here, baby. And pushing the fiber all the way through. Now, I've been doing this for a short time. 
I am by no means the expert, but I do know it's a lot of fun. And when I'm having a very tense week, um, this is the craft of choice. This is what I enjoy. I love that ATC too. This I made several of them. Um, this started out as this one. This one is one that I did with putting um, pieces of resin on it. And that's some of Terry Sproul's glitz effects, which is part of her mixers line. And then I have several that are like this that I haven't added <coughs> the, um, the resin and stuff to. But... But I have several different ones in this series that I did. And all of these shapes are cut out with my Sizzix. This is like the gears from the Tim Holtz die. Um, and these are the Primitive Hearts, which is some of their old dies. And this is the Tim Holtz um, ATC. That, that's that shape. So, yeah. I um, this, this is my first series of felted ATCs. I'm really liking them. I'm going to do some more uh, pieces of, of gears and hearts. The gears and hearts that I made for this, I made a, um, a mold putty mold out of them so that I could make more gears and hearts to match them. Stop, please. Thank you. So, and then I'll have, I haven't finished putting the cards on the back, but I'll have cards on the back of them that kind of help support them and make them ATC like. So that's what I did. That's where I went with it because I have like 10 colors of roving and they're not all the colors that I, I mean, I'm not a big orange fan, but I have a lot of orange as you saw. Um, good night Vince. And so, I mean, you know, Sam will make orange balls for people apparently. Um, but I wanted to be able to have more colors and also felt is readily available, you know, in packages at stores. And so I wanted more options and I do have a lot of different yarns and fibers that way that I want to, you know, felt in. So that's where we're going with that. And soda. And soda. And I need you to get off my lap because I need to be able to use both hands. Okay. So please, you're welcome to pull your stool up and sit beside me. Okay. There are, I have several different kinds of needles that I've purchased, but there are probably 10 times as many more. Um, there are several companies that make them. Clover is probably the most recognizable, and you've seen a tool like this that Lisa has. And this tool will accommodate up to five little needles. And you can switch them out. And it has holes in it like this that you put your needles in. And I'll go ahead and show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my coarse needles. You can buy them from Clover and they come in little things like this. Um, this lighter one is the finer needles and this is the coarser needles. I'm going to show you on the coarser needle what a needle looks like because, well, it's coarser and it's bigger and it's easier to see. So hang on. Here... Here is the needle, and you can see on it, you see the little barbs? It doesn't look like a sharp, straight needle. It has, see how the light catches that? No, you don't have to use the five needle thingy. But you see all those little barbs in there? That is what catches the fiber, be still, and pulls it through your substrate, okay? And so, to do this, I'm going to load this one for everybody, and then I'm going to show doing it singly also. This is, if you're wanting to cover a large amount of real estate fast on your piece, you can um, use something like this. So, you get all the little, the little noses down in there. There you go. All the noses are in there. And then the little metal disc goes in on top. Yeah. And the way this machine works is you unlock it, and when you press down, all those needles come out. Okay? So that's how that works. 
and they are sharp, so don't, you know, go pressing into your leg or something like that, Amanda. Um, not naming any names, Amanda, but, you know, she's been known, Amanda, to needle felt on her leg, just saying. So, um, but anyway, and I like these little needle cases, it's easy to keep up with them. I got a kit one time to just practice learning how to needle felt. And it came with these two needles. And um, you could do a whole bunch of needle felting with two little needles like this. But, like I said, if you're trying to cover a large amount of real estate, you can see where having three or five needles would be very handy. Clover is not the only maker of tools. And they're not the only maker of a multi-tool like this. But this is just what I was able to get at Joann's. The other, um, this company, where's my sheet of paper on this company? This company is Wisteria, wisteria.com. And they have several different needles, okay? And this little kit came with uh, four different needles. And they came with four different needles and four different gauges, which is the size around. Uh, so the larger the number, the smaller the needle. So this 40 triangle is going to be, it's a bitsy <coughs> compared to this 38 triangle. And you can see when I put them side by side, well, they would behave. They want to cross over. Come on. There we go. <coughs> you know, they're two different sizes. <coughs> this one being a lot finer. Night Raven. Glad you could come. So... The smaller the number, so the 40 triangle is a smaller one. And I like this company. They have these little, um, it came with the little coffee stirs on the ends of these to help protect them. And it says, if you're doing extra fine detail to use the 40 gauge, this is also the other thing I like about this company, is they, they tell you about the needle and what a good use for it is. So the 40 gauge would be for extra fine detail, felting and sculpting, smoothing a surface. You could also, in something like this, use the small needle for that. Um, and then the 38, which is the medium coarse, I didn't show you that one, but it's between the 40 and the 36, would be for medium felting and used to attach one item to another. And that did work very well. I used that on putting these two together, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and that worked very, very well. And then the 36 gauge, which is the biggest one, is for fast felting. So if you want to just do a whole bunch really fast, you can do it really fast. Now, this also comes with what they call a star needle. This is the star needle. And rather than having three edges, this one has four edges. And I don't know if it's if you can tell that. But it also has different little barbs on it in different spaces. And this is also used for doing large areas because it will take, it'll go fast. Okay. So, does that explain some? And like I said, I have these couple of different types. And Clover just calls theirs coarse or fine or medium. Um, they don't have them in gauge sizes. And, um, but I by no means have even a small range of what they have out there. Um, I just have very few. So, and a lot of people will felt on a, um, on a piece of like a brush, a dense little brush. But since the this little brush costs as much as um, the tool itself, I went to the garage and got a piece of foam. Use this side of the foam. And this is just some green cushion foam. It's real dense. And 
I like it real well. And I'm going to start by showing you, like on a little square, doing a simple little project, like making a bee. Yeah, I like this foam. No, I didn't get a felting pad, Molly. I just have this piece of foam that is um, like, like the foam you would use in a cushion. And you don't have to, I mean, that's what Lisa, I asked Lisa, I said, do I have to have a brush or a felting pad? And she said, no. So let's say I want to put this, this little guy, get him started. I'm going to get my number 38, which is the one that says it's good for attaching things to stuff. And you just go up and down. Don't try to go at it sideways or this way. That's how you're going to get your needle broken. You just go up and down and you poke. And this is why this is very stress relieving. Because while you're poking, you can think, you know, I really wish before he left, my husband would have taken the trash out. But oh no, he did not. And things like that. You prefer the foam, Jen? Or my son is driving me fatty. And you know. Now, to, the bigger the needle, the bigger the little holes that it'll make. Come on. Focus. I want you to see because it made little holes. There you go. And you can see it looks kind of, it's got some little holes going up there. I mean, they're not big holes. And then the back starts looking like that. Now, if you put something on there and you don't like where it is, you can pull it up and put it somewhere else. So... That's the other thing I like about felting. There's no fail there. Now, this is considered flat felting. And if we get really um, creative tonight, I watched some videos. It's kind of one of those. I saw it on TV. I think I can do it. Um, I want to see how difficult it is. And I might actually attempt that live and on the camera. I don't know. We'll see. But there's three-dimensional felting, too. This one is considered flat felting. The only time I've ever broken needles, Jen, is, um, is in my machine that has the five, and they were the fine needles. And I went to go down, and I went at an angle, and it broke. And the reason I like a big chunk of foam like this is because um, it's not, you know, I can poke all day and even pushing it all the way down, it's still not, I mean, it's not all the way down in the thing, but the part that would be doing the poking is there. This is another interesting thing. They have a technique where you do this, where you, oh, you can't see it, um, over here, you you go up and down like this and turn, and that is how it helps pull it up. You mo you don't like the tool with all the needles? This is like a foam pad like you would make a cushion with, Lee. It's not florist foam, it's just foam pad. Or just a chunk of foam. You wanted to, you didn't like your couch, you could take the foam out of your couch if it wasn't too squished. Okay. So I've re pushed him in there. It can be quite overwhelming when you go to the store. And you see all the different items they have. I know when I went to the store the first time last summer, 
I wanted a felting tool. I knew I wanted a felting tool. I had seen Lisa using the one with all the needles. And I thought that looked really cool. And so that's why I wanted that. And when I got that, I also got a kit. And the kit came with two colors of roving and a little pattern. And it had you doing your project into just a plain piece of felt. And that's what this is. This piece of felt here is just a plain piece of felt. This piece of felt is a plain piece of felt. Um, the felt that I used in these projects, everything except for this is felt that you could get like at Walmart. This is wool felt. I got some wool felt um, for Christmas and it it is very nice. It's very different and it's very um, lumpy feeling compared to the rest of them. You can see it has kind of a, a hill there. But you've never seen green foam. It's all white or yellow. <laughs> How funny. Yes, the little kits come with the single needles. And that's where I got these two needles was in that little kit. So, and those are nice. And these can be just like little handles if you want to put them on other needles. You could do that. So, but let's put our bee's body on here. I want him to go right there. Like that. So, and I'm just layering these on. There's nothing else that keeps him on here other than the fact that the fibers have been pushed through to the fiber or to the base below. And that's really all felting, needle felting is. It's pushing, you know, your fibers through and tangling them into the base below. And you can do this action so that when you push it through, you're getting more of a tangle or you, that turning action that I was showing you. And so you can start seeing, I like this part where you can kind of see it looks like little hairs. Like somebody's pulled a, a wig cap. That's very cool. Pam just said she buys uh, wool clothing and felts them in the washer. Which, you know, we saw how that action works. Where you, When we were making the ball, you just need a little bit of soap and hot water. And then she cuts them up to felt onto. Anybody who's ever sat and done this, it becomes addicting. My girlfriend, Holly, we sat and did this at a um, craft show one day. And of course, everybody wants to stop and see what you're doing. But then the other thing is that... Um, you, you become addicted, and she immediately had to go find her own felting tools. And uh, I think she ended up getting the brush, but I really like my piece, my piece of foam. So, anyway. So, he's all attached, and now he needs some bee stripes. I had some bee striping. And so... And then I have scissors right here. You should try this, Lee. This is totally addicting. It's so much fun. And you can be as creative as you want. What I've found is other than the basic idea of, you know, poking the tool through the, the fiber... Um, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to how you have to do it. I want to show you some other fun stuff and, um, in a minute here. But the reason this is cut in this shape is because, um, we had cut several of these and made little one-of-a-kind coasters and we made them in series so if you wanted to buy all of them you could but you didn't have to and um and we had brought all this stuff that we had pre-made to this craft show and what we ended up selling were our felted items that we made while people stood there and watched it was crazy
that's what everybody wanted was, you know, a felted coaster for a friend or a little felted animal. So, so here we have B with stripes, and you can see a stripes coming in through there. And so here's his little face. Now we can do, you know, a string of thread. But I want to show you another tool. Mom found this at Tuesday morning. And it's very cool. And what it is, is, and Clover makes these. It's a template. And see, it's pretty thick. It's, you know, the thickness of my thumb. It's a template, and you can make... Um, put your wool roving down in there and felt in there. And so I have been playing with this. This has got the dots from uh, the template that I have that has snowflakes on it. And this template also had a hedgehog. Um, and I've got him all done. I'm going to go and make, you know, do some embroidery on it and, and make his details come out. And then Will wants his name on this. This is going to be a bookmark for Will. So I'm going to have um, Mom, with her chunky letters, die cut Will and put that down the front and put some more dots and stuff on it. So, But that's where we're going with that. But Jen, you, you read my mind. I, I also felt that doing that, sorry, pardon the pun, guys, um, with, um, with cookie cutters would be awesome. But the way this works, I'm going to use some of this orange because I think the orange will look cool with the bee, is you take your felt pieces like this and pull them and pull and pull and pull. Yes, I this this base here, the bee, the stripes, the the heart that I cut out, that is all regular felt, just plain old felt that I bought at Walmart. And then my mom has bought me a whole bunch of cool remnants that she um, got at, um, like, Joann's on sale. Like, you know, almost a yard of remnant stuff. Now, I could see this being where if you're going to break a needle, you would because you would run into <laughs> the, uh, the plastic. Yeah, they have all kinds. And these little templates are very cool. And like Jen said, I think doing this with a cookie cutter would be easy. Um, because it's basically a cookie cutter without a, a chiseled, ed, you know, a, an edge that would cut the cookies. Um, and I've got a gajillion different cookie cutters and all kinds of shapes. And all I'm doing is shoving this roving down in there. And then as I push my needle down in, you see it get um, packed in there. Yeah, this one has a bunny and these cute little flowers. And I love, I love all the sizes of dots. I'm a big fan of polka dots and dots. In general, anybody who knows me knows I'm a big dot fan. Uh, I had Amanda make paper with dots because I needed polka dots. Um, and probably, it's not my favorite anymore, but for the longest time, my favorite was her polka dot paper. I used it in everything. Um, she has since told me I had to use other papers because she was not going to feed my need for polka dots anymore if I didn't use other papers. Nightly, thank you for coming. And see, doing this, you have to have 
a single needle, you couldn't do this with the tool. You would totally have broken your tool by now. And I'm still poking this down because I can see some of it is kind of wadded up. And somewhere I have it attached. Right there. That's where I have it attached. You go around the inside edge to make sure you get it all in there. And that's what I'm doing is going around all my edges. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I felt it. I felt it off my felt. But you can see I actually made my template a little bit. It made this nice, chunky, three-dimensional flower. I felt it off my edge. Okay. I could cut that. Or I could um, pick the whole thing off. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's move him over. He's still kind of wadded in the right shape, so I'm going to move him over a little bit and fix him because I felt it off the edge. Jen, have you felt it off the edge before? <laughs> yes. I love that it's so forgiving because, you know, technically you could just buy, um, you know, one thing of roving and keep using it over and over again if you had to. Yeah. If you bought it for therapy. <laughs> I will help you, but it's when my show is over, I'll help you, Elaine. And the thing I like with a single needle is you can really, you can target exactly where you want that to go and make, make it shaped. These are the same kinds of needles that people who do the needle felting for dolls and sculpting and stuff use. I think Jude does needle felting for dolls. Okay. There we go. That moved over good. Have a little bit of funny fur going over here. Let's see if I can get that pulled out. There. I got him moved over. I went too close to my edge. Uh, no, I don't felt on my lap. Or if I do felt on my lap, what I do is I have um, some dollar store um, little cookie sheets that I got and I have a piece of foam that fits that and um, and I use that now what this is is mohair and I guess I could find the end of it and since mohair is a natural fiber right you see where I'm going with this guys
<laughs> you guys, when you did it, did you, um, did you fall off your, your thing and, and cuss? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I just looked up. <laughs> oh, you, when you stick your needle in your leg, you cuss. Okay. All right. Yeah. I would totally cuss if I stuck my needle in my leg. Where did I get my, mo I got it out of this bag down here between my legs. Um, actually the mohair, um, a friend gave me, it's just, just mohair yarn. I had a friend who, um, did a whole lot of, of, um, crocheting and stuff. And I, um, I happened, she saw a bunch of my art that I had been doing and the fibers I had been using. And she said, um, come see me. And I did. And she hooked me up with all kinds of really cool fibers. And there were a lot of, um, natural fibers in there. And so, and Lisa had done some stuff with mohair before or some kind of yarn. So, you know, make a little stem. Pretty punch yarn is that is that a natural fiber, Pam, or is Pretty Punch yarn like a, a, um, just a real fibrous yarn? It's wool. Cool. So, and so if you wanted to make like a, um, you know, a leaf of any kind or, or do some, some grass along there. You could definitely, you know, play with the grass. I want to put a center in my flower because I think my flower needs a center. And I can either make the center match my B, which is what I'm doing here. And this again is just plain old felt. It's not any kind of fancy felt. It's just felt. It also came out of my bag down here between my legs, Amanda, but, but it, it was probably purchased at Walmart. Um, if you have in your neighborhood, some sort of, um, store that does yarn crafts or crocheting and stuff, you could probably find balls of yarn like that there. That would be natural fibers. So, yeah, stuck a little center to my flower. Let me get that better focused. Um, and I want to make like a little tail off the end. So going back into my bag, Amanda. I have pretty pink um, wool also. We may play with this in a minute. I haven't played with this before. That looks fun. And Ooh, that's cool, but that's not what I want. I think I want to try. We'll see how this works. I haven't tried this, this particular yarn before. This is a yarn that's got a little bit of a sheen to it. And I'm going to... Let's see how that works. It's sticking. And 
the reason I wanted to use it was because it had had a sparkle. You know, and you know how I feel about the sparkle. I'm all about the sparkle. So, uh, this I just cut a piece of felt, Molly. And I might put a, an eye on his bee. Yeah, I just cut a little piece of felt and, and I went poke, 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 and he's in there. Good night, Susan. Thank you for coming. Have fun this weekend. I don't know what all you're doing, but I know you were talking about going to, uh, to paint at a club. That'll be fun. Take pictures. I'd love to see what you did. Susan gets to do all kinds of really cool art out in public and uh, last weekend I believe it was or maybe the weekend before I can't remember she went and did chalk paintings on um, the sidewalk somewhere in Florida and there's like an art festival or something and she went and did that and there were some really cool um, see he's got just a little bit of sparkle in him um, yeah, you need to learn felting. This is a lot of fun. Um, and there's, when I post my replay on my blog, I'll also post on there. I found some places that have some online tutorials. I didn't watch them um, today, but all the information from that website is really wonderful. I'll make sure it's something, you know, decent to, to do and I'll, I'll post it and, and y'all can enjoy it because it's so much fun. Having so much fun. Ah, painting in the nightclub tomorrow night. That'll be fun. Go to a nightclub and listen to music and paint. So, but anyway, so there's that. Here, I'll show you how I did my eyeball again, Molly. Um, let me get a piece of, of black. I had a piece of black. There's my piece of black. Okay, I'm going to take my piece of black. And... If you had a die that cuts small pieces, that would work. But I just cut that. I'm sorry you're yawning, Dawn. It's early where you are. And pokey, pokey, pokey. And now his eye is attached. So, and you could, you could write with the yarn if you wanted to. You could write, you know, be good or whatever. But let me show you something fun that I did the other night. Let's see if I can find it. Not I'll stamp another one. thought I had it right here beside me. Okay, hang on just a second. Oh, oh, I here he is. Okay. Now this is what this is where I want to go next with this. Okay, here is a rubber stamp. And he's a Santa. And I stamped him onto a piece of felt. Thank you. This is a Viva Las Vegas stamp. This is um, 
I was very fortunate. I won this stamp. This was in that plate of stamps um, that I won back at Christmas when Viva Las Vegas did their 12 days of stamps blog hop. And I'm very glad I won this stamp because this was the whole reason I wanted to win. So I stamped on just a plain piece of felt with, um, and what I used to stamp on him with, or stamp him on with, was the um, Stuart Superior Memories ink. So nothing, nothing uber special, just some ink. And I was thinking I had red roving. Oh, I do have red roving. Here we go. I have some red roving. I'll put the I'm gonna put the orange roving back away. Now, I don't know that this is the perfect stamp to do this with, um, because it has a lot of face stuff going on, and I would probably, in hindsight, stamp it with. Um, I would try to stamp it with maybe even some um, stays on to see if it does a little better as far as bringing out the face. But for the application I want to do tonight, just to see how easy it is to fill in his, you know, headgear and what that would start looking like, this is going to work perfect. Okay. So where I'm going with this is I want to take just some roving. And this would work really well with like outline stamps, you know, anything with an outline that doesn't have a lot of detail like this one does, it would work really well with that. But I want to change needles. Um, I'm not trying to cover a large area anymore. I want to cover something more, um, more specific. So I'm going to change needles and use the smaller needle. <laughs> yes, he's from Viva Las Vegas Stamp, which is stampo.com. And this is where the red goes, in my opinion. And I'm just going to start putting that in. And you can swipe back to the line where he goes. Where I think this would be a lot of fun is to do this with, um, like, any of the outline stamps from the company outlines, I think filling in some of theirs like this would be great. I know I have a lot of images, um, even solid images, if you stamped it in a lighter color so that it wouldn't show through. Um, like I said, Molly, this stamp is probably a little more complicated, but I knew I had red roving, um, and I just wanted to see. You know, this is just a, I want to see if this works kind of a thing. And I really kind of like just how his hat is coming together. Don't be afraid to try new things. Because why not, right? Yeah, a metal stencil would definitely work well. Well, thank you, Molly. I mean, I'm just following where his um, where his stamp was. And I have the stamp over here on the side also that I'm looking at to make sure I remember, okay, he goes down here and this is a big wad of red too. But... And I think it would be fun, and I haven't tried this either, 
is where, you know, his, this is and his cotton ball fluff on the end. What if you used real cotton? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Susan, I thought you were going to bed. <laughs> You're still talking to me, Susan. Or just think like that, um, Amanda, that buffalo stamp that you have. Yeah, right? Mark it. Yes, exactly. Mark his face on peach felt and felt that to it. You know, stamp it, stamp it over again. And this needle is so has so much more um, bend in it than the other needle. Uh, just for sake of argument, you know, of what, what it feels like, how, how different is the lighter needle. It's a lot different. It's a lot skinnier and has a lot more give. I want to go back over the top of his hat here. Okay. Are y'all familiar with Angelina fibers? You missed the whole bee trail? I did that with this, this really shiny yarn that I had in my grandmother's stash from probably the 70s. And I stuck him on there. No, the bee trail wasn't a mohair yarn. It was, it was totally acrylic yarn. Uh-uh. The stem here was mohair. And probably before I finish, I'll do some more flowers and, and stuff around him. Yeah, the this this down here was mohair. So Yes, a fuzzy shark would be very funny since sharks are really not fuzzy. And occasionally you have to pick him up to, you know, grab him. Have an extra wing here. Um, Another application of doing these needle felting things is once you get it all felted, you could back it with um, like uh, stitch witchery or something like that that would, um, not necessarily stitch witchery, um, like heat and bond, heat and bond, not stitch witchery. Um, and that would that would glue those fibers down in the back and hold them. And you could use it as a patch. Uh, you could put some embroidery on it if you're an embroiderer or do it with cross stitch like Bev had mentioned earlier. Um, make little pillow ornaments or, I mean, there's so many neat applications for felt. I've made a number of bookmarks with it. Uh, I did quite a few during Christmas, Peace on Earth um, with letters that I had cut out and then added to um, added a little circle and some some pieces that made it look like earth and it said peace and then on and then earth so I want to see where this is supposed to be going over here okay kind of a fat bob But anyway, what I was talking about is Angelina fibers. Those are really um, iridescent-y and shiny and stuff. Putting some of those in with some roving or anything that you were trying to make um, 
a good fabric glue on the back. Ooh, that's good. Like Fabri-Tac, Jen, is that what you're using? Yeah, you could, there's so many cool things you could do. I, and it's, the projects go together so fast and easy. That's what I also love about this. You know, when we were sitting at the craft show, we were able to make, I mean, we didn't put flowers on ours. We had a bunch of bees and, um, and just did real simple with a bee flying across the thing. And we did like a set of four and did a real simple button stitch, buttonhole stitch around the edge of it. And people were buying those like, you know, they had to have them. They were gold. It was crazy. And one lady came and said, can you make cats? And I'm like, yes, we can make cats. And so we made some cats and she bought those. So... But I think the fancy fibers also would look really, really cool with those. Um, I think this would look cool for his beard. Because it goes to a little bit of a gray. Let's see. I don't think this would look good in his hat. I think that needs to be a fluffier kind of yarn. But like for his beard and stuff... I think you totally could like follow the line of the beard. And just do pictures with this. And not nice, Susan. And this yarn also is not a, is not like a wool fiber. It's just a, just a, a yarn. My helper went to sleep. If y'all were wondering what happened to her. She had been sick earlier this week and she's really a lot better now. She was so excited her cough wouldn't stop. Yeah, um, yesterday was her first day back to school, and yesterday was a long day. After um, after a full day of school for her, we went over to the Kiwanis Pancake Supper, which is a fundraiser for um, my son's unit, his uh, Troop 18. And so we went to that, and um, and she there was a jazz band there so she danced and and she uh, did all of her makeup work there and she colored and chatted with some of her favorite people and watched her bid she bid on a on a kite and won her kite so she's very excited about that and uh, it's looking pretty cool you can see where his little 
I was wondering how, I mean, when I look down at it, I can see where it is, but I was wondering if y'all could see where it was and does, if it looked like his beard was flowing. And it kind of does, doesn't it? Looks shaded. Yeah, I like because of how I'm, you know, I'm doing it in a strip at a time. I may do some more pieces. Let's see if I can get a couple more cute pieces going here again. So. Oh no. Was he in an accident? How'd he hurt his face? Texting while walking. Oh no. I've already told Will he's not allowed to text while walking. Or phone while walking, period. He might not be texting, but he'll be fiddling with his phone. Looking for music or or playing a game or or whatever. Wow, he fractured his cheekbone and his nose. Goodness. There's a lesson there. No texting while walking. I'm not that talented, so I really haven't tried that. I don't even try to read a text and walk. Ouch. Come under here. Well, they say girls take chick or got girls dig guys with scars, so chicks dig guys with scars. I know I could get that out. I'm not sure all that's true, but you know. Maybe that'll feel better while he's healing. And when I'm putting this in, guys, I don't know if you notice what I've done here. I'm kind of trying to follow the line in his beard. So, like, I cut these short along here to make this go straight. And then I'm going to come back along that line here in a minute with another long piece. Just in case y'all were wondering what it was I was doing. Yeah, I, I'm not that talented. I can't talk and walk. I think if you had something like this yarn, you know, a yarn of some sort like this that could be treated like his hair, I think this would totally... I'm going to do a cup. I'm going to come back over here and kind of fill that in this way. But I'm going to bring it over here so I know I want to start over here. But this is just kind of a like a lightweight yarn. It's not even a sport weight, more like a baby weight almost. Um, I was 
probably something my grandmother used to make a a poncho or a shawl or something with. She did a lot of crocheting and and scrap and uh, knitting, and so I got a lot of her yarn too. Some of it's very, um, like I said, very old, very very 70s and stuff. <laughs> the side is very fuzzy. See it? Here it is illegal to text and drive. It is very illegal to text and drive. And they are totally on top of it, thankfully, because there's so many that have, you know, really had bad accidents and stuff. One of my mentors was instrumental in getting that passed in our area. We were one of the first ones um, in this part of Texas to have that. And one of my mentors was on our city council that got that done. I was very proud to, to know that. I helped him with some of his research on that. Because that was about the time also that Oprah was doing the pledge. I don't know if y'all remember. Oprah had done a pledge about texting and driving on her show. And he's not a public television kind of person watcher. He's our network television kind of watcher. He, you know, watched Channel 13 and watches sports and news and that kind of stuff. But um, never really watched, you know, the, the networks. And... Uh, so I started sending him a bunch of stuff. And then, of course, he never watched Mythbusters and all of the stuff that they do with that. And uh, Mythbusters, they determined texting and driving was more dangerous than... Or talking on the phone, not even texting. But talking on the phone and driving was more dangerous than drinking and driving. So, of course, obviously, yeah. Talking on the phone while drunk and driving is probably, you know, pretty deadly. I love Mythbusters. Wow. So, okay. I like my Santa's face. What are y'all thinking here? Y'all liking him? Okay, his mustache comes in here. I need to come and get a couple of more of those pieces up here before we come back in with his mustache. And yeah, this could be built up as, you know, how, how that flower was built up. You could build that up really, really cool. Thanks, Jen. I, I like how he's looking. Thanks, Molly. I mean, because now I just, I, I have to go look at all my stamps. I think the little house mouses would be cute like this, too. You know? So, I agree with Susan. I think I'm going to, I got some, I have some peach um, felt. I think I'm going to try to stamp it with maybe some, um, maybe get a crisper image with like a, a brown um, stays on and um, put that there. I think I'm going to do that. And, and felt his face back on. And so I'm going to do his mustache over his face. So I'm not going to do his mustache right now. But let me see if I have like a... I thought I had a white yarn. Or something pretty similar. But yeah, that's going to totally look cool. Y'all liking that? Yeah, leave some hanging at the bottom and kind of brush it. I agree with that. That sounds like a good idea too, Pam. So I think what I'm going to do, 
like I said, I have a piece of peach. Um, I'm going to restamp this. And then the other thing is to make his glasses, maybe put a little bit of acrylic, um, like transparency, and then attach it with the crystal lacquer to his eyes. So they look like he has glasses on. But I want a really bright white fiber there. This is not bright white. This is more, you know, beardish white. Uh, so, and when I get that stamped, I'll just get him felted on and then put his glasses on him and then do some fur for his mustache and then up here. So these two will be kind of holding his, his you know, his face down also. I'm not going to super felt in here because I don't want to lose the definition when I go and and uh, stick that in there. But, and putting the Angelina fighters in this with the white would be awesome. It would make it really sparkle. Yeah, I love all the texture in the beard too, Pam, with, with using, I mean, um, when I get to the part of this that's got the gray in it, I'm not going to use that. I'll check that, Bev. They may have a cotton thread that I could use, when, couldn't I? Because DMC does have some cotton stuff. Yeah. I think there's there's tons of options here to make that really, really cool. Um, I'm glad I tried that. That's a lot of fun. This, this is super easy to do. Let me pull it up where you can kind of see the textures in his beard. And then get him all, you know, when I'm done, get this and trim it out. And uh, that would be cool as a patch or a tag or an ornament or any number of things you could do with that. So, yeah, I love that. I love how his beard looks like, like you could touch it like it's a real Santa. Yeah. So. Stamp is from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. This is this stamp right here was the whole reason I wanted that plate of stamps. So I wanted to win it because I loved, loved, loved the stamp. I still haven't done a card with him, but um, love him, love him very much. So let's check on our our felt balls. Here's the felt balls that Sam made. They're still a little wet. I'm gonna um let them dry out. I like the mottled look. Let's see if we can get that to focus for you. Come on, focus guys. There we go. I know, this turned out so cool. She really is. I mean, she fixed mine for me. She made it all better. I, I, she's gifted when it comes to felt balls. That's all I can say. So, but, and we did our B. So, isn't that fun? It's so easy. So, so easy. So, um, we didn't even play with this fiber. This fiber, I know, does really cool stuff. So, you can just trust me on that. So, yeah. Um, I have tried doing the felt balls with crafting felt, where you took and, um, like, I shredded it. Well, first of all, I think the problem was I was doing it, not Sam. And, uh, but yeah. So, but Sam is just really good at that. And um, I'm proud of her. I think she did pretty good for being a silly girl on her, her debut felting, right? Good night, Amanda. Glad you came. So, Yes, Sam is, um, Sam and I have mommy-daughter time this weekend. Uh, we're going to do some of our Operation Write Home cards. Um, let me share with you what we're doing. Um, Operation Write Home is doing a, um, a challenge right now. And the Odd Show is participating with it. Um, and let's see, here it is. We're... Um, if you go to, we have an event on the Odd Show Live, and there's some details on how to take care of, you know, making sure you get some 
cards made that the soldiers can use and whatnot. Um, their challenge is due to the shipper by the 20th. Um, I have a little link set up on our blog, and if you enter, uh, you enter a chance to win a prize. And I gave away a prize uh, last week, I believe, when I talked about the beginning of this challenge, or maybe it was the week before. I can't remember. I'm sorry, guys. I've slept since then. Ah, the week before, because last week was Fab's birthday, or this week was. So last week, when I talked about it, um, I had two hot-off-the-press kits. We gave away one to Leanne, and um, whoever, you know, gets the most cards in and gets drawn at random, because we're going to do that drawing with random.org, you'll win the other kit. And um, Mommy's putting with that a pack of, um, a, a she calls it a scrap pack. Um, and it's a pack of cardstock that kind of matches the colors that go with that kit um, that can use as card bases. So get your cards put into that. Uh, remember, we have Odd Show Dailies uh, and a weekly reboot. This week, our reboot is going to be at 9 on Wednesday. Um, I have Scouts on Tuesday and Terry's show on Monday and Demand show on Thursday. So Wednesday works for me. Um, and right now, um, I don't know what I'm doing. We've got, you know, I want to see what my, my compadres have done during the week and see if I want to revisit one of those or go on out with something else. Uh, National Scrapbook Day, live extravaganza, May 5th. I'm very excited about this. We've got lots of great demoers and, uh, we're doing a philanthropy with that. We're giving away via a raffle, a cricket expressions 2 brand new in the box and um, you get three entries for five dollars it benefits charity wings and uh, currently they're working with crafting for the cure and with um, city of hope and with big brothers big sisters and also right now they're running a um, a quick fundraiser they're trying to raise money for the hurricane vict or for the tornado victims and they're doing um you know instead of having a cup of coffee that day donate your coffee money uh to them to help raise money and they're trying to raise about a thousand dollars so if you want to help with that you can go over to charitywings.org and look that up um next week is leslie ray's scrappy gig uh, we'll be doing scrapbooking stuff. We'll be drawing for um, the random person who wins for my Scrappy Challenge. Uh, this week's Scrappy Challenge, you get bonus entries if you do stamping in your scrapbook. Since we did stamping in our scrapbook last time, uh, the prize will include stamps. I believe it's a house mouse set. Um, and I will draw for that prize on the show and right now, Raven has all the entries, so uh, you get your entries in, so you can can be in the running. Uh, I do my scrap my crafty gig every second and fourth Friday of the month, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can follow me at my blog on lesliray.blogspot.com uh, or Leslie Ray's fan page on Facebook, and I'm Leslie Ray on Twitter. Yay! You're gonna do some layouts, Molly. That would be awesome. And, um, I didn't get anything that I <laughs> used today through cut and paste memories, but, um, I bet if you needed to do some special ordering, um, mom works with a couple of companies that have some felting items and I'm sure she could get those for you if you are having trouble finding felting supplies in your area. So does anybody have any questions? Y'all didn't see me use this mad boy. You want to see me here? I'll do some, I'll do a, a quick, you know, demo of what that looks like so you can see it. Ready? You love this online store? Thanks, Mall. Okay. Here's just a wad of fiber. This is what this is good for. Let's see. Credit locked. Is you take and you do this. And you keep your fingers out of the way because as Jen would tell you, it hurts like a bad mamma jamma when you get five through you instead of one. So, 
and it just pushes all those little fibers through there. So and that also is very, yeah, it's really fast. Really, really fast. So that's fun to play with. And you know, if I was doing a large area of something, you know, definitely would do that. But like doing Santa's beard. That's definitely a single kind of thing. So, um, Miss Dawn is going to be streaming tomorrow, and that is 6 p.m. my time, Dawn, correct? 4 p.m. your time? 4 my time, no, 4 Dawn's time, 6 my time, 7 Molly, or er, Amanda time. There you go. So everybody, please come and see what Dawn is doing. She always does something fun and crafty and makes me want to go paint in my art journal. Which is something I want to do this week. I think actually what I'm going to be doing this weekend, Sam has decided on, let me see if I can get it all in, a garden princess tea party for her birthday. And so I think I'm going to be making some flowers inspired by my friend Deborah Buckland. Um, I love those flowers that she's made. And I have some of those punches. I have some dyes. I'm going to go watch the tutorial again and see what I come up with. So wish me luck on that. I think I'm going to do some of those um, because I don't know if y'all tried to buy <laughs> silk flowers or any kind of flowers. But ouch. Ouch. Oh, ouch. So I know I'm going to be doing that at some point this weekend and making her invitations for her birthday party. So, yeah. Big money. And I've got more scrapbook than most. So I think I'm going to be making some flowers. I went to see if they had any pink crepe paper because I also saw some daffodils and some stuff made with crepe paper and they didn't. But, you know, hey, what can we say? So, I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. I'm going to show you the Santa one more time. I'm going to get him finished. I think he's very cool. Might put him on a festive Friday card. Who knows? And y'all have a great weekend. We are beginning spring break here in Stephenville, Texas. And that should be lots of fun. I'm going to be childless come Monday or Sunday or one of those days. Grammy's coming to get the kids, and it's just going to be me and the Hubston. You know, we're going to sleep. So, there you go. Hi, everybody. Don't forget to uh, spring forward. So, talk to you later. Toodles. Night.